<laughs> call the meeting to order. Oh, that's right. Yeah, thank you. I, I should The first order of business is I um, want to welcome everybody to the uh, uh, Board of Wildlife Commission meeting. And uh, we'll start it with uh, Pledge of Allegiance led by the Director Mayor. Everybody ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. Uh, can we have Vice Mayor a roll call of the commissioners, please? Present. 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 Here. Commissioner Howell. Here. Commissioner Coburn. Here. Commissioner McBeth. Here. Commissioner Moray. Here. Commissioner Hall. Here. Thank you. Uh, can we have a roll call of the county advisory boards? Then, as you stand up, make sure you say your name loud so Suzanne can get it on the record. <coughs> Paul Dixon, Clark County Cap. Donald, Donald Livestock Association. Gil Yana, Carson Advisory Board. Jack Lewis. Bill Miller, White Point County. Wayne Whitten, Churchill. <coughs> Matthew Johnson, Edinburgh County. Steve Hemp, Albany County. Corey Lyle, County. Bill Meyer, Lyon County. Tom Wilson, Washington County. Got everybody? Thank you. Welcome again. The next item of business is uh, <coughs> approval of the agenda. And uh, is there anything? Uh, we have a couple people have to leave early tomorrow. So we're going to make some slight adjustments, I think, in the agenda to accommodate them because they want to be here on a couple items discussed. Uh, Commissioner Rain. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'd like to see the. Um Portions which are the member items, county advisory report items, public comment, and the item seven all moved back to between uh, 13 and 14 on the agenda. Yeah. Just before the uh, setting the next commission meeting, simply to accommodate that. So you want to put uh, everything through number seven? Everything through number seven. And uh, insert it after 13 and between 14. Between 13 and 14, yeah. Hope that should accommodate everybody's trying to leave early. Does anyone uh, have any problems with that? So we can uh, get some commissioners out early tomorrow because there's some planes this way. problems. Um, Mr. Chairman, I guess I'm a little confused. Items which now? One Saturday. On Saturdays? Oh, on Saturday. Saturday. Okay. On Saturdays. This is just on the Saturday agenda? Saturday only. Between member items and item 7. Okay. Inclusive. And just put them be and between 13 and 14. Okay, we'll do that on the uh, Saturday ad agenda, make those changes. In. Uh, next item on the agenda. Do we want to do a vote on that? All for that? We had a motion by Scott, I guess, to change the agenda. Any second on it? Second. A second. All for the motion, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Next item on the agenda is member items and announcements. Uh, any emerging items from any of the commissioners at this time here? Mr. Chairman? I've got something I'd like to read into the record. Go ahead. <clears throat> On Thursday, January 14th, I met up with Mike Laughlin and Fallon, and we attended the Nevada Livestock Association that morning. The, the main reason I attended was to get input for some ranchers and farmers concerning my interest in the wild horse gathers. My questions and the answers given were fruitful and rewarding. My perception was that to slow the rate of reproduction, it would be simpler and less costly to simply geld all the stallions. However, it was explained that a better alternative would be to cut the dominant males proud, and they would 
still be able to cover the mares without any foals resulting. The cost of the shots for the mares is between 240 and 260, depending on age, and then they only last one to three years, if effective. Whereas the cost of gelding, or the proud cut, is 40 to 70 dollars and is permanent. And there are other issues that are of concern, such as the geldings all banding together and not mixing with the rest of the herd. On Thursday afternoon, Mike Laughlin and I drove to Ger Gerlach to observe the Calico Complex Wild Horse Gather. Mike had set up our invitation through the BLM and it was very enlightening. First of all, the Katur family that has the contract with BLM to do the work has over 30 years experience and they are totally outfitted with the personnel and equipment to get the job done. The short version of all the negative press concerning the gather is 100% unfounded. With that said, I think we should continue to support the gathers in the short term, but also continue to explore curtailing the rate of reproduction. Thank you. And I believe uh, we have a short video that uh, three or four minutes if the chairman approves. Okay. Would you like that? Sir? Yeah, go ahead. We can, I think we have the time for it. This is a picture of the, the horses being herded by the helicopter. And the deer. And as you'll notice, uh, no, they're not running. It's a gentle lope. The helicopter's a good uh, 100 yards plus behind them. And it's just a gentle lope into the uh, pen. Right about this time, you can't see it, but uh, they have what they call a pilot horse that the herd follows right on into the pen. And the helicopter takes off. There was no uh, abuse with the helicopter chasing the horses or anything. They merely herded them. Here you're going to see uh, their... Uh, loading these horses into trailers to take them over to a holding facility. And uh, these guys do an excellent job. This is the uh, temporary holding facility. I guess that's what that says. And uh, this is uh, about 60 miles from Gerlock. What they're going to be doing now is they're going to sort these horses, the mares, and the stallions, and the foals, they're going to sort them uh, to transport them to Fallon to the uh, holding facility there waiting to be shipped uh, or sold or auctioned or adopted. This is the big transport. It takes them into Gerla or from Gerla, uh, temporary holding facility all the way to Fallon, and that's uh, I'm guessing 160 miles, 150 miles. These guys do a great job of checking everything out.
50 miles of gravel road. This here is the uh, holding facility in Fallon. This guy just started building this in November. And uh, when I was there to visit it, he had a half a dozen welders going full bore. And you can see the <coughs> facility is uh, coming along pretty good. The problem is uh, we're spending a lot of money on horses that you couldn't get $25 a piece for. Is this a private facility or a bed? Yes, it's a private facility, but uh, they, uh, the BLM, uh, <coughs> everything's expensive. I mean, they, they, they do a great job, but uh, this guy's uh, got himself a little uh, business going here. $3.92 a day per horse. Seven days a week. But back there enjoying themselves. I do believe that's it. Yeah, that sounds like quite an operation. It is. <laughs> yeah, Commissioner McBeth. Um, we get thank, some lights. Thank you, Chairman Lent. Um, there have been a series of articles in the Las Vegas papers um, dealing with um, urban wildlife conflicts uh, and uh, one of the articles is actually written by uh, Doug Nielsen, uh, the department's uh, uh, education. What, 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 I'm not sure which uh, di division. Yeah. And um, anyway, it's, uh, it's uh, related to, uh, I believe I saw one of the bill, bill draft requests where uh, there's a potential for, uh, you know, maybe getting uh, uh, wildlife services involved with these kind of conflicts. And, uh, um, but the flavor of the articles, there's there's two different two different members of the public that are are out there that we need to be concerned about. First of all, there are the uh, the people who have their dogs snatched out of their backyard by a coyote, and uh, of course they are very adamant that they don't want those coyotes out there, and, and so they are um, pro removal uh, of the uh, uh, of the uh, predators, uh, uh, and uh, the second group is uh, the group that uh, wants to defend the right of the predators to be there and uh, and that uh, we encroached on their habitat and so therefore we've got to deal with it and so uh, I just um, uh, wanted the Commission to be aware of these articles uh, some, some of you may have uh, read them uh, in the newspapers and uh, and uh, uh, um, I think that you know uh, getting Wildlife services involved is a good idea, but it's uh, it's a whole different ball game. It's uh, you know uh, it's not the type of thing we're going to be going out there with uh, airplanes and helicopters, uh, you know, shooting coyotes, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I think that they've got to obviously have some uh, other methods and you know to deal with these issues and uh, do it in a very discreet manner to uh, kind of keep this uh, you know this issue from um, you know going in the wrong direction. So. Anyway, I just thought the commission might want to be aware of, uh, uh, of those uh, articles in the paper. Thank you. Commissioner Cabin. Uh, I just had a uh, kind of a, an update or announcement. I flew with the uh, uh, department biologist uh, uh, on January 9th. We did deer surveys along the Sierra front here. And uh, I just wanted to say that Carl Lackey and uh, the pilot Mike King are unbelievably professional um, haven't been in a helicopter in a long time since, since the old firefighting days <coughs> excuse me um, but uh, these guys really know what they're doing and I, I just wanted to compliment them for that and uh, let everybody know that they're doing a great job out there Did you see the black bears? no bears a lot of snow I had a, I had a couple comments uh, I would uh, like to uh, applaud Tom Wilson of the Washoe County Advisory Board for his outstanding presentation to the policy committee regarding the duck stamp judging. Uh, his profession the mirror was such a pleasure to work with. You know, you can tell he's used to pleading to judges, but it was a pleasure to work with him uh, 
when on his discussion and uh, I wish we had more people like him it was really it was really nice and he understands the problems and offers sincere solutions and and a willingness to work with you and it was real evident with the committee hearing and I just wanted to thank him uh, also uh, looking at the agenda with the Eureka County Board you know uh, that I've always that I've always e elaborate on here what the purpose of the county boards is to not just mimic the uh, commission agenda go out to uh, different agencies and and in the uh, Eureka County one on February the 1st uh, wildlife enhancement projects on Bureau of land management and administrated land administered lands and discussion of BLM Battle Mountain District representatives they brought the representatives is and this is exactly what I think the county board should do so I want to applaud Eureka County for <coughs> doing this because this is exactly uh, and reading the minutes of Washoe County Board on October 15th and uh, Chairman Flowers noted that the recent review of heritage projects did not reveal any heritage projects in Washoe County but I don't remember <coughs> Washoe County submitting any but uh, this is exactly what <coughs> the county should do ask for heritage projects uh, I'll tell you one uh, who's who's from Marshall County here Tom let me give you an example uh, you know I think this would be a perfect one that uh, <coughs> Washoe County should have tackled we in Hayes Canyon we we hadn't had a sheep in there for we had a tremendous sheep hunt in there year for many years 10 years or more and we haven't had a sheep hunt in there for 10 years because of die-off that'd be a perfect project for Washoe County to bring back to the Commission and say let's reestablish a population if possible <coughs> there's some domestic sheep herders on the border there and there was a little bit of problem but I don't know if it, they could work it out where we could get a herd reestablished in Hayes Canyon because that's a resource there's really valuable to Nevada hunters and it's right in Washoe County and that'd be an excellent project I think that should come up and uh, the other thing looking at the minutes on on the Washoe County you know I keep on the uh, you know Sheldon is a big a big resource and and for a lot of hunters and it just says no no notice no news no news when I was on the Washoe County Board I called uh, Oregon up and demanded the guy come down and give us an update on it you know and you got to push that pursue these guys make them come to the meeting because uh, the plan at the Sheldon is, is very critical and we should know what's going on in that but that was just some suggestions you know and and uh, if it has to be a heritage or if it's got to be a problem with the Commission bring it up to us those are excellent projects that we'd like to hear from the cab so uh, that's that's what I'd like to add anybody else have any announcements if uh, Commissioner Caparo. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, following up on that, uh, the, the uh, it would be helpful to know what the status of the gather is, the horse gather up there is on both Hard Mountain and, and the Sheldon uh, in light of the Calico situation and that because they have a serious problem up there and I have not uh, been able to keep up with exactly what's happened. It was kick back again for some EIS work and that but that's where it'd be helpful if you had somebody from the service uh, report on that so that we don't have an idea of, of where we are Thank you. Anybody else? If not I'll move on to the next agenda item is County Advisory Boards manage wildlife member <laughs> items anybody from County Boards want to come up and uh, uh, talk about any emergent items in in their cab uh, this is the time to do it step on up and what set your name for the record? <laughs> uh, Chairman Lynn, Thomas Wilson, Washington County Advisory Board. A uh, couple of things. First of all, thank you very much for uh, the kind words. Uh, uh, and I have uh, uh, made note of your comments uh, to take back to my uh, uh, to my board in regards to the sheep in, in Hayes Canyon and, and the, the Sheldon Refuge. I think those are, those are very good ideas. One of the things that uh, was brought up at, at the last meeting at the uh, Washington County Advisory Board was a and I, and I, I don't, do not want to overstate this, I don't want to say it's a problem, but was the issue of the general policy of allowing action on, on items within the same two days. So we had the first reading on a Friday and the second reading on a Saturday. Uh, we discussed this at length and nobody on the Washington County Board is claiming uh, that that is illegal or in some way uh, against the open meeting laws or anything like this. But there is uh, an issue involving our ability to solicit 
uh, opinion from the residents of Washoe County and then of course fulfill our obligation and submit this to the to the Commission and it was suggested that uh, we take a look at the policy and see if there's a way to, to, to encourage more participation, more solicitation from the members of the, uh, the, the, the residents of each, uh, each county so we can bring those concerns to the commission. There was a general concern that, that if it was if Friday, Saturday uh, on every item uh, that some people, and we had one situation where a resident of Washoe County could not make the Washoe County Advisory Board meeting and so obviously was not heard and we couldn't take that information and bring it to the commission. So. There's a general concern and a, a wish to uh, send that policy to committee or talk to people about it and see if there's a way that, that we can uh, create a program by which the county advisory boards can more appropriately and accurately uh, give you the information from our residents. And that's about the only thing that I've got. Thank you. Uh, well, even on the seasons, we might, if we do that, we'll have to make a recommendation on the seasons one month and then not act on it till the next month then. It may be difficult, which is why I think talking about it is better than, than, than just trying to push yeah. through or, or, or create a solution. What we, what we try to do if we have <coughs> committee meetings, uh, if we have a committee meeting like this morning, mm -hmm. and they did, uh, I wouldn't put it on as an action item because I haven't seen it, you haven't seen it, no one's seen it until you come to the meeting. And so that's not proper. But if we have committee meetings, we should have them time to get the minutes onto the Internet so you can have them before your cab meeting. Absolutely. It might be on the internet, but either have somebody attend the committee meetings because we set up microphones throughout the, here at least, if we're on all the committee meetings and come to the committee meeting here or else get it off the internet and then put it on the cab meeting uh, before we have it, if we put it on as action on the commission. Right, and, and I, I think that one, that is a great idea because we have run into some issues in the past where the committee meets uh, maybe we'll have a representative on that committee or, or, or listening in, participating in the committee meeting. Maybe we won't, just depending. Um, but we don't have the information soon enough to get it to, to, to be in compliance with our open meeting laws so that it's published to the community. And if we don't have, the, don't have it properly published to the community, then we can't take, a, take action on it. So, yeah, I don't I, like committee meetings a day before the commission or two days before the commission. It just, it, it's, it's convenient and it's less expensive, and that's where we started. But, right. you know, I like to have enough to, time to get it out, or at least on the Internet, so everybody has a chance to see it if they can't attend the committee meetings. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Tom, Tom, don't go away. <laughs> uh -oh. Don't go away. Don't go away. Address I, the commission. I want to come up next, uh, and but I need Tom to stand here. Uh, Gilliana Carson Advisory Board. Uh, at our meeting on Monday, uh, the uh, Carson Advisory Board voted to establish a, a joint working group with Douglas County Advisory Board to make recommendations on a way to improve the deer herd restoration effort. And we wanted to extend an invitation to Washoe County and Story County uh, to join with us so we could really put together a Sierra Front uh, working, or deer herd restoration group working group so that, you know, all the people that we kind of have common <coughs> issues on, on this side of the range as opposed to the eastern part of the state uh, or the very northern part of the state that are unique. Uh, and we felt that if by the groups coming to the commission, you know, with a consolidated set of recommendations, since we have a lot of, you know, common borders with ourselves, that it would be easier than each group working independently. This way we could not duplicate the efforts and you would get one consolidated report or recon set of recommendations. That's an agenda item coming up, too. Oh, okay. yeah, well, that's what we were going to do about it. So okay. you're welcome Excellent to join. I'll give you Thank more you. data. Any other uh, county advisory board announcements? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner <coughs> Cabrera. With respect to that issue, um, they, there's also another manner in which you can participate in the subcommittee meetings, and that is by telephone. In fact, that's how uh, we've been able to save some money. Charlie. Uh, I was on the phone with regard to our legislative committee meeting. So it, it's another manner in which you could actually stay at home, call in to, the, uh, to get the uh, uh, number for that and, and participate. And we encourage that. Uh, Paul Dixon, uh, Clark County, uh, Chairman Land and the board. Uh, I just like to uh, reamplify what was said earlier, and I don't need to repeat anything about getting information out. I mean, uh, Commissioner Capro and I talked 
in between the Finance Committee and this, and this meeting quite extensively. I think one of the problems you're getting and some of the strong opinions you're getting from the cabs right now is because we don't have all the information and we're being led to some degree by a small amount of innuendo or strong personal opinions at our meetings. And you post, Suzanne posts two weeks in advance your agenda and as much of the information that exists. And I think anything that you want the board to take action on or have action on, if it's posted in that two week time window, then I think all the cabs have either been noticed or they can, as pointed out by Commissioner Capurro, attend via telephonically, although sometimes that's got bad connections, I've heard, for people who have tried. If we had that, I think what you'd get is a more informed cab decision on what you're asking to take actions on. And then I think having a Friday, Saturday reading is not going to be seen as much of a problem within the system. But there are going to be some things that may require you to rethink when you come into that from the cabs if we think that the item is bigger or, or has <coughs> bounds beyond what we could accomplish in those two weeks with the public. We're really trying to get the public input in and get it you the right input back to your to your commission here so you can make informed decisions from what the county boards think. That so that's I'll kind of stop there, but it, I really do think if we could post when Suzanne posts your agenda, anything you're going to cover on your thing and have all the backup at that time rather than the backup floating in as we come into the meeting would be a huge change in how we do business. I know that the district attorney of Clark County was is anticipating talking to the district attorney for um, to Brian up here and to Noong about trying to make sure that we have that stuff posted. And, and uh, she's been talking with me about that. And I'll meet with her when I get back uh, this next week to actually determine how we do that. Because it's really forcing us to push the limits of open meeting law to try to get what you think are action items on your thing and have enough stuff available to the public and have an informed discussion rather than one that's based on what we think is coming out of what we heard from somebody. So I'll leave, I'll leave it there. The last thing is I just wanted to mention that the Clark County Shooting Park had a soft opening over Christmas and it's open now. Uh, I talked with a lot of people over the Christmas and New Year break out there. Uh, great success for, for the hunters and shooters out there and uh, basically we have a lot of people using that facility right now and the trap uh, lines down below. I went and shot trap there a couple times. It's probably one of the better places that I've shot trap in the United States. So just to give you a heads up that that's open to the public here. If they're down that way, bring your shotgun or a rifle and try it out. It's a cool place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other cabs, I'll move on to the next item, public comment period. Uh, make sure you fill out a card if you wish to speak. Uh, since we don't have uh, adequate clock here, the Vice Chairman Rain will hold up a, what, a, what color? It's got a yellow card for one, for got a few little bit left and red card please your time's done you must have played soccer at some point <laughs> hey <laughs> Suzanne had these <coughs> she's had them stored in a closet just for this yellow time. means probably got 15 seconds left because I know when you're talking you just lose track of time and it's nice to have a clock on the wall in front of you so you can get your thoughts together and and finalize them and you can say a lot in three minutes uh, uh, so we're going to open the uh, public comment period. Who do we have? Uh, so I must have four cards to specify public comment. We'll go through those first. First would be uh, Kyle Menser, Wealth Sheep Foundation. My name is Kyle Menser. I'm a director of the Wild Sheep Foundation. As you may know, we're having our annual convention uh, here in Reno this weekend. Uh, this will be the 16th year that we've had our convention in Reno. We are contracted for both of the next two years, and we have an option for <coughs> three of the next four years, and we may take all of the following four years. We're going to be here at least six of the next seven years. 7,500 people expected to attend uh, our convention here starting yesterday through the weekend, and we hope to build that up to 15,000 within the next three years. We have, Rev, if you are not familiar with the Wild Sheep Foundation, many of you may know us as FNAWS, the Foundation for North American Wild Sheep. We changed our name for basically for marketing purposes a couple of years ago, but the same organization. We are the first organization to create and, and handle a heritage tag, uh, governor's tag type of uh, way of, of helping people get a tag for hunting bighorn sheep. And I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, our organization. We would hope that we would have an opportunity to be awarded that tag, uh, those tags, for the season coming up next fall and next winter. 
We have raised here in Nevada almost $1.6 million by the sale of that tags. Uh, no other organization has the experience that we have in marketing, networking to people who would be interested in these kinds of tags than the Wild Sheep Foundation does. And I think testimony to that is this year we have a record 51 of these heritage slash governor's uh, special tags that we'd be auctioning off starting this afternoon and through tomorrow. We have about 10,000 member organization. Uh, you have an issue going on right now, I'm sure you're all aware of, with the die-off of uh, in a couple of bighorn herds in the uh, East Humbles and Arubies. We have been very involved in this issue uh, through some million and a half dollar grant, Washington State University, whereas the actually that's that's the center of the research that's been going on on the issue between uh, in contact uh, between domestics and wild sheep. We have reason to believe that's the, the issue out in East Humboldt's. And there is a project that uh, Nevada Department of Wildlife is uh, proposing to capture 30 rams, or excuse me, 30 sheep uh, from three different herds, 10, 10 from each herd, and, and do some studies on them uh, so that they can determine more about certain drug usages uh, as a way of possibly mitigating the damage that's being done to these herds. We are fully in support of that. Uh, we think it's gathering additional information on this issue is extremely important to future wire sheep, not just here in Nevada, but all over North America. So if you have any, we would, we would very much be honored to have those, those tags awarded to the Wild Sheep Foundation uh, in the coming year. And uh, if you have any questions. I have a question. Uh, you know, we, we're going to do that project, but we're in need of uh, some money on that, like 35000 or something. And if there's any volunteers of any help financing it, we have the organization would appreciate it and is that true director mayor yeah ken mayor for the record director of endow uh, yes we would uh, appreciate any financial support we could get from a variety of groups i have a letter here from nbu uh, uh, they're willing to step up to the plate um, of course these kind of events are not budgeted we don't have dollars especially in this fiscal time so um, anybody and everybody that would like to contribute to this uh, project we would certainly uh, appreciate their help this and you're probably really hearing about more of about a die-off when uh, Perry talked to us on the sheep die-off a little bit later. But uh, appreciate you coming down and uh, and uh, talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kyle. <coughs> Anybody else on the public so, comment period? There were three cards that said, said public comment. We had Judy Karen, followed by Dennis Wilson. Old age put the glasses on first. Oh. Good morning, Chairman Lennon, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Judy Karen, and I reside in Washoe County, and I am representing myself today. With all due respect, Chairman Lennon, Commissioners, what I am out about to bring forward to you this morning is not out of disrespect or intent of disrespect by any means towards the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners, the Nevada Department of Wildlife, Office of the Attorney General, the Honorable Governor Jim Gibbons, or the public. I bring this forward today only for awareness, education, and discussion under public comment, not as an attempt to blindside the members of this commission. I reference the letter dated October 22nd, 2009, Office of the Attorney General, State of Nevada, copied Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners on Open Meeting Law Complaint AG File Number 09031. I have provided copies to the Recording Secretary for handout and have extra copies for the public. Respectfully, I question to you as Commissioners, why AG File Number 09031, which is written correspondence, which was received, was not disclosed and reviewed at the December 4th and 5th, 2009 meeting of the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners and copies not provided to the exhibit file. According to Nevada Board of Wildlife Standing Agenda Item Number 2 of regular meetings is correspondence by Chairman Lent or the Chairman, which is an informational item. 
The agenda item reads, the commission will review and may discuss written items sent or received by the commission since the last regular meeting and provide copies for the exhibit file. Possibly a proactive measure would be to add a new section under agenda under item number four of the conduct of meeting of commission policy one, the general guidelines for the commission, defining procedures with regards to the commission written correspondence. This is for transparency when the commission is conducting business as a public body. I request to the commission for public record, AG file number 09031 be entered into the record and attached to the minutes and become part of the official minutes of the record and the exhibit file today. I sincerely thank you for allowing me to comment today and request the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commission review and discuss open meeting law complaint AG file number 09031 under agenda item number two of the February 5th and 6th, 2009 agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Opinions and I'll put the extra copies in the back. Thank you. Next we have... Commissioner um, McBeth. Yeah, I, uh, I got a, a phone call from Judy um, earlier this, uh, well, maybe within the last two weeks uh, with regard to this issue, and I... Um, I did not, I was not aware of it, um, and so um, I did do a little bit of uh, uh, digging. I know that uh, I, I spoke to uh, Director Mayer and uh, he did receive the letter, uh, but when you look at this letter, um, it basically states, when you go to the, back, the, bo the bottom of it, it, it basically indicates that the commissioners are CC'd, and, and so is the secretary. Secretary of the uh, uh, of the Commission, Ken Mayer. Uh, it, it it almost seems to me like this is an issue, uh, a procedural issue, and maybe a breakdown with the AG's office. And and so maybe I'm hoping that uh, that I can get a comment uh, because it, it it looks like the CC and the and the and the letter should have come from the AG's office to the members of the Commission, and and that may be the reason why we didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I can comment on that. I don't do the open meeting law. That's uh, George Taylor, and, and uh, I, I don't know where he sent that to. Um, I was aware of it, um, you know, partially my mistake. I got slapped, and uh, I realized, you know, at the meeting, after I realized that we were, the agenda item was probably incorrect, then, then uh, we stopped things. But um, I duly chastised, and I think I've taken steps since that meeting to try and make sure it doesn't happen again which is what the opinion calls for so I'm duly chastised and so but as far as bringing it forward to the Commission I I, I don't know I don't know how it didn't get distributed I don't that's, I didn't distribute it so okay. that's all I can say Commissioner Ray no, thank you Mr. Chairman this has brought it up just you know like to point out the appropriate uh, the two sentences directly refer to me is under disposition review of the audio of item number two does not show Commissioner Rain exceed the scope of the item he connected two issues discussed with correspondence he sent or either sent or received thank you for pointing that out and this was never actually sent to me I ended up seeing a copy it was sent to somebody else but uh, okay but that's uh, we got Dennis Wilson followed by Paul Dixon is who has cards here for the record, my name is Dennis Wilson. I'm representing Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. Uh, there's a handout <coughs> coming around, so I'll wait just a moment for all the commissioners to um, have a copy of my letter. My purpose today is to read this, uh, address the commission. Thank you, Chairman Lent and commissioners for allowing me to speak and to read this letter uh, into the record. <coughs> Dear Chairman Lent and commission members, the current ongoing infectious pneumonia outbreak 
in Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep and mountain goats in the Ruby Mountains and East Humboldt Range has proven to be a truly devastating uh, issue to these big game populations. <coughs> the Nevada Department of Wildlife has proposed a scientific study to evaluate the effectiveness of the antibiotic Draxin against the respiratory pathogens cultured from these affected animals. Other parameters may be studied simultaneously as time, animal stress levels, and resources permit. The proposed study involves capturing 10 Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep from three different regions within the affected populations. These 30 animals would be GPS collared and biological samples taken as indicated for the study. A sample group would be injected with Draxin and a control group would not receive the antibiotic. These animals would be followed via GPS collars to determine the effectiveness of this clinical trial and other parameters deemed uh, appropriate for the study. In bolded print, due to the devastating nature of this disease outbreak and past pneumonia outbreaks in Nevada's bighorn <coughs> sheep populations, information derived from this study will be invaluable, not only regarding this episode, but for planning treatment and management protocols for future pneumonia outbreaks. Funding for this study will be provided by Nevada Bighorns Unlimited, NBU, and other potential sources. The NBU Board of Directors has approved $25,000 for this study. NBU will approve additional funding as needed to assure the success and completion of this project. MBU will pay individual vendors directly as it has in the past. Time is of the essence. <coughs> Helicopter and capture services must be procured today. Uh, today. The success of this study depends upon the timely approval of this request. Respectfully, Dennis Wilson, co-treasurer, Nevada Big Hands Unlimited. Do I have any questions regarding this? Yes. Yes. Uh, I had heard before that uh, this outbreak. Uh, my brother's been keeping me pretty sure. much up to date on too, that mountain goats were also involved in this, which was a surprise because the surprise. elevational differences in the populations uh, they generally don't interact as much. So when you say devastating, that's a that's a good term because that uh, that is clearly a, a real problem. It, it is, Commissioner Caparo, and, and we're very, very concerned about this. I don't have an answer for you why specifically goats were involved this time. They are susceptible to the organisms, but just how that transfer occurred because of the elevation differences, I don't have an answer for you. Thank you. Dennis. Thank you. We appreciate it. That's why we made this announcement to see if we can get some help on that. I'm offering 100% help. We're trying to help it out, so you don't have to do that. Thank you. Got a lot of cards that don't um, specify the object, um, the item, but Paul Dixon was the other one with public comment written on his. I have no comment. <coughs> Mel Belding, Washoe County, representing myself. Um, a couple of questions and comments were brought up. Uh, reintroduction of sheep into 013. Uh, two years ago when this outbreak occurred, um, Chris Hampson appeared before the Washoe County Advisory Board. Um, I might remind Tom Wilson, might jar his memory a little bit. Um, <clears throat> at that time, they, he was asked if we had planned to reintroduce sheep into the Hayes range, 013. Um, the, as Chairman Lent mentioned, um, there's, a, there's a flock of sheep, probably three to four bands, by a wool grower in California that is at the south end of the Hayes range. Uh, probably a bigger problem are the two farm flocks that are on the north end of the 013 range. Um, we have approximately 25 domestic sheep and maybe twice that number of domestic goats on two private land holdings and they are both within about five minutes of travel 
from the spring that is called Slide Springs, which is on the west side of the Hayes Range, and uh, that possibly could be a, a big problem with the reintroduction. Um, but the department <coughs> did stress at the meeting, and it was addressed at one of the county advisory board meetings when uh, biologist Chris Hampson was asked. Horse gathers in 012 and 014. I sit on the stewardship board for Modoc and Washoe counties. Um, the jurisdiction of BLM is within this, along with the Winnemucca range, Winnemucca BLM. As of last Friday, we had about 1,450 uh, animals that have been captured and taken to Fallon. Um, we're hoping to get 2,500, and this roundup is going to be done in February into February it doesn't look like we're going to make that number at 2500 we're all hoping that we can but with the problems uh, I was attending a meeting when Commissioner Howell was on the other line and I asked him if he did witness uh, Mrs. Pickens and her three helicopters running the horses further away from the gather pins which brought additional stress to those horses and maybe cost us a day or two to bring those animals closer to the trap um, since then, uh, this week is an ongoing effort to educate mostly upper level people, staff people from different organizations to come out and observe the gather. We have uh, protesters that are constantly battering the horses right at the, um, right at the fence line now. So they're trying to make some artificial barriers where we can keep those people back instead of turning the horses where we're just, these people don't realize it, but they're putting additional stress on these horses to be gathered. Um, uh, 033, uh, the Sheldon. Um, Dr. Lynn, I'd love to be able to have some input into it. Um, I haven't had a yellow card since high school when I was playing uh, volleyball, but I'll try to keep them short. But uh, 033, the Sheldon is uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and there's a strategic planning that's been going on and uh, we, we need everybody's input for the Sheldon everyone get on the internet Google Sheldon and put 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 your input in there they went from 75 to 125 horses to over 800 that are allowed in the Sheldon now this is totally ridiculous um, in a lot of people's opinion the 800 put them on I want to say one more thing on uh, 014 there's a TRT, a technical review team. I'm the chairman. And uh, there's a, uh, a conversion that they want to do from sheep to, from cattle to sheep. Um, and we're going to be needing everybody's input on that also. This, they're wanting to locate a band of sheep um, north of Fox Mountain. And this TRT is next month. The Department of Wildlife is aware of it. So this little information. <coughs> Thank you. Anybody else on public comment? <coughs> For the record, Bill Meyer, I think you have a card, uh, Scott. But anyway, I was I'm here on my own behalf. Uh, I was unable to attend our Lyon County uh, cab meeting because of a conflict. A Truckee Carson Irrigation District uh, meeting. There's a, uh, uh, an agreement running around out there. It's uh, a Truckee Carson, uh, Truckee Carson, <laughs> I can't remember. Truckee River Operating Agreement. Uh, Brian uh, recognizes it, I think. Anyway, I think it was signed by Washoe County and the Paiutes. And this agreement has some stipulations in it that are going to take uh, water from the from uh, Churchill County, Hazen, and Fernley, and uh, run it into Pyramid Lake. Uh, there's a pretty large uh, wildlife management area in Fallon. 
uh, of course the farmers are involved in this as well but I didn't know if anyone here was aware of it because we haven't heard I haven't heard anything about it until just the other night and I think we ought to pay a little bit of attention to it even though it's a conflict of interest with Washoe County uh, and the Indians uh, because this wildlife management area that uh, is in Fallon could end up like the one we have in Fernley, dry. We used to have a good, uh, a good uh, uh, group of uh, fish and uh, uh, ducks and geese in Fernley about 30 years ago, and we got our water taken away. And uh, this has the same opportunity. And I don't know whether Churchill County has heard about it or not, but uh, anyway. I'd like this to. Uh, I'd like. I'd like the commission to think about this, or work on it, or get some more information. I don't have a whole lot of, of information, but this was what was presented uh, at our meeting the other night. So, okay. I'm glad you didn't have to give me a yellow cart. You're pretty efficient at that. I do. I'm told, Mr. Chairman. I like it that way. Uh, Commissioner Caparo. Isn't this the same agreement that was brokered by uh, Senator Reed and uh, with uh, Judge Hardesty as the kind of master that had uh, to put all the parties together? I think it's the same agreement, uh, which divided the waters of the Truckee River and the Ore Ditch Decree and all that. This, this, excuse me. Yeah. This has to do with the Ore Ditch Decree and the and the reallocation of the Floriston flow. Right. And I don't know, there are several other things as well. About a day late and a dollar short to do anything about that agreement now. Well, they're still being fought. So it may be late, Indians but uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, the commission ought to have something to say about it. <coughs> Anybody? Uh. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Lunt. Uh, for the record, uh, Thomas Wilson, Washington County Advisory Board. Uh, it occurs to me that uh, this may end up being, I don't know if I'm going to be coming to any more commission meetings uh, between now and the summer, but it might be my uh, last opportunity to address the commission as a member of the Washington County Advisory Board, and I wanted to let you know this and let you know why. I was asked to uh, resubmit my name for reappointment to the Wash County Advisory Board for another three-year term uh, and I respectfully declined uh, the Washington County Commission uh, but it's absolutely not out of disrespect for anybody here it is simply because I have a three-year-old at home and a seven-month-old and I find the the time constraints with uh, raising two young boys and my law practice uh, my activities with uh, uh, Nevada waterfowl and the other conservation groups that I'm a member of uh, a little difficult to juggle. Uh, so uh, you probably still will see me on and off uh, regarding issues of conservation and ducks and legal issues, things like that, but probably not as a member of the Washington County Advisory Board, and I wanted you all to know that uh, it actually has been uh, been an honor uh, serving on that board and, and uh, coming before this commission. Thank you for the work you've done. Thank you. Anybody else uh, seeing none, I'm going to close the uh, public comment period. Uh, next item of business is approval of the minutes.